Thank you for joining us this morning at ITS Partners. Um, today we're going to have a discussion around driving software asset management transparency within ServiceNow. Um, a little bit before we get started about ITS is we're a very customer-centric um, organization. Everything about us is, I, is our outcomes for our customers. We focus on being really, really good at a very few things. We're not everything to everyone. We focus on depth over breadth. Today's uh, speaker, Yvette Matthews, is her, pro her product team is focused on SACM, so service asset and delivery uh, of those service asset and configuration management activities. Um, we put our customers' interest above our own, and um, we like to ensure that all of our customers are satisfied at the end of a project. So a little bit about Yvette. Our speaker is certified in any and all things asset. If you have heard me speak before, you've heard that same comment. I'm not going to go through this whole list, but needless to say, I'm happy to answer any questions that you can think of around asset management. So today we're going to spend a little time discussing improving your software asset management data. Um, SAM is a great way to drive um, cost savings and become compliant with regulations, provided we have good data to start with. So here are some different ways that we found in working with our clients to improve that data and to drive stronger software asset management transparency. One, improving your foundational data. Foundational data is key to any CMDB or SAM activity. Some of the things that we found cause um, the most problems when we're doing software asset management may be our user and device data is incomplete or incorrect. So some very simple ways to help you improve that data would be creating reports, showing inactive users or devices which, um, which ha have software use rights tied to them. So you know you have um, allocations per device or per user. So ensuring that your report pulls in that information is critical. Additionally, creating reports that show you in stock or retired devices that have installed software if they are in stock or retired, we would prefer that they're wiped. That's best practice. Um, and to make sure that no software install data is still tied to those devices. That's a quick way to um, make sure that some of that basic data is going to be accurate. So when you're running reconciliation inside of ServiceNow on SAM, you're getting appropriate or correct numbers. Next, we have cleaning up software install data. Now, software install data comes from your discovery mechanism. So that's going to be ServiceNow's discovery tool. It could be SCCM. It could be Alteris. It could be from just about anywhere that you could get installed software data through a discovery tool and you have that integrated into ServiceNow. So that software install data isn't going to go away just because we wipe a machine or that machine goes into retirement. We need to do a little work in order to make sure that data gets updated. First thing I'm going to suggest is optimizing your workflows or maybe developing them if you don't have them um, to trigger the removal of software installed data when a device is wiped. Now, remember, I just said we should be wiping our machines when they go into stock or before they're retired. And that's so that we're not responsible for the software that's still found on those machines and the licensing thereof. In addition, I need to make sure ServiceNow reflects the fact that there is no software on those machines at that time. Um, in order to do that, I can set a zero scan um, using my discovery mechanism, or I can have a workflow triggered upon the status change of a device to remove the software installs from the software install table. 
you're going to want to also periodically validate that your software install data is matching a, the appropriate software discovery model. Now, that's an automated feature that's part of SAM Professional and that all software, actually it's part of all SAM um, inside of ServiceNow, that all software installs will roll up into an associated discovery model. Now, very, very seldom, but I've seen it a few times, I have found that some software installs roll up inappropriately to a software discovery model. When I found those things, I've contacted ServiceNow and we've been able to make some corrections, um, trying to understand why that happened. Very, very seldom, but in that case, that's something that you guys might want to think about, um, is that just validate that data occasionally. Um, are your software models doing what you expect? Um, one of the main reasons I get called from clients is that their software models aren't behaving in the way they expect, meaning they can't reconcile with things. They don't see any results in reconciliation for a particular model when they know they have software installs. So the first thing I'm going to ask you to do if you have this happen is when you create your software model, validate that matching discovery models are found. So that's pretty simple. Create your model, set up your discovery map, either through one of the ones populated by ServiceNow or creating your own, and then click on the related link that's blue in the middle of the screen that says matching, show matching discovery models. Um, that should pop up in another window or another tab in your browser that should show you any discovery models that match the criteria you have set forward in that discovery map. And once you see those, then you can guarantee you're at least finding discovery models. If you don't see any, go into the discovery model table and verify that the addition and version that you have specified in your discovery map are the addition and version found in that discovery model. For example, you may have put in your discovery map that the version is 2018. The discovery model may say the version is 18, meaning they're not going to match. Therefore, it's not going to go forward and find those install records. So what I am going to suggest is that when you see that happen, go through and validate it, and then update your discovery map to match those discovery models. Most of the time, if you're not seeing a software install or a discovery model tied to your software model, it's almost always due to the fact that your discovery map is matching incorrectly. In addition, you're gonna to wanna to validate that your software installs are actually associated with the discovery models. Discovery models exist on the ServiceNow platform after software is uninstalled, meaning if I remove all of a particular version or edition of software from ServiceNow, that software discovery model is still there. Therefore, I'm going to want to ensure that I'm picking the right discovery model with software installs in order to have that count toward my overall license compliance position. How accurate is your CMDB? Anyone who's heard me before, I talk a lot about the CMDB, but that is where our software install data lives. It lives on the software install table inside of the CMDB. Our software compliance number is only as good as the data about the hardware our software runs on. If we have bad hardware data, meaning incomplete, inconsistent, duplicates, data that isn't clean, we don't have good data to base our software license compliance position on. Therefore, it behooves us to periodically validate our CMDB for completeness and accuracy. 
as a software asset manager, that may or may not be part of our job on a day-to-day basis to validate the CMDB. What I would do is work with your CMDB owner or with your, your ServiceNow admin to develop a CMDB completeness or accuracy report as it relates to software and the overall health of the CMDB. You can configure and run CMDB Health, which is a function of ServiceNow out of the box. It just needs to be configured to monitor the overall health of the CMDB. Great way to get started. Does need some configuration. Feel free to give ITS a call. We're more than happy to help you walk through getting that configured in your environment. But overall, a healthy CMDB is going to lead to a better compliance number. A lot of duplicates a lot of incomplete data, a lot of data that doesn't have all of the critical information we need in order to do software compliance is going to lead to a less than optimal experience using software asset management on the ServiceNow platform. What are your data sources? So some things to think about is where is our software asset data coming from? In addition, where's my hardware data coming from? Because that's needed because I don't know any software that runs on air and the cloud is just someone else's computer. Therefore, if we can make sure that we bring all of our data sources into ServiceNow, we have a better chance of showing our true compliance position. So things that we're typically using with ServiceNow's SAM professional or SAM foundations tools, I may bring in data via ServiceNow's own discovery tool, which is an agentless tool which scans the network and is able to bring me in data around the software that's installed on devices. I have Microsoft's System Center. Config Manager, which is SCCM, is its more common name. That's going to be able to do similar things. It's an agent-based tool, so it's going to be able to work on our Windows-based devices and bring me in data around what is installed on the machine. In addition, SCCM is going to bring me data around usage of software, meaning how long and how often people are using specific pieces of software. This is critical to ensuring that I can create reclamation candidates, meaning things I can remove due to low volumes of usage. Last but not least, I may have Mac or iOS devices that have software on them, and I would love to manage those. One of the key problems I have with Most of my clients' data is we're neglecting to include Apple devices because it's hard to get that data into the system. ITS has built a Jamf integration. Jamf is a tool that can be used to manage your Mac and iOS devices. Our configuration works very similarly to SCCM, meaning it allows us to see what's on the devices, um, track the metering, and bring that data in appropriately into ServiceNow. So I don't have to skip out on having my Mac OS and iOS devices accounted for in my compliance number. Because even if I don't want to, and they're hard to get the data, it still counts. So why would you want to leverage ITS to help you do any of these things? One, we do them all the time and we enjoy doing them. Um, Two, we have the expertise and the staff to help you do them successfully. If you'd like more information on how ITS can assist you with software asset management, feel free to go to www.itsdelivers.com insights and download any of the following documents. In addition, feel free to send me an email at ymatthews at itsdelivers.com and I'm more than happy to help you with any of your questions or concerns around software asset management on the ServiceNow platform. I'd like to thank you all for coming. Have a nice afternoon.